Welcome to another City Skylines video. In today's video we're going to have a look at 5 tips and tricks for the game City Skylines. And I'm not the kind of guy that wants to drag things out, so let's just get straight to the top 5 tips and tricks. First of all, tip number 1. Figure out your flow before building. Before you start building a city, it's a great idea to figure out the flow of your city. So what exactly do I mean with flow? Basically, in which direction most of your traffic travels. For example, people traveling to work, industrial car and trucks delivering goods. There will always be some random traffic here and there, but most of the time the traffic is rather directional and this should be taken into account when designing a city. A rather extreme but perfect example would be our industrial project. Should be linked up in the right corner if you want to check it out after the video. And what we do in this project is manage insane amounts of traffic. At times we're at the game limit of maximum amount of active vehicles. Every plot or place in the city is carefully managed with an entrance and an exit, making it a straight flow through the district. Now it's not always easy getting it right on the first try, but having the flow in mind will still allow for some pretty decent capacity before shit hits the fan. So a pretty good example here is just having your entrance on the left side, and on the right side of your city you have your exit, and pretty much all cars will throw from the left side to the right side. This is more easily manageable if you do plots and areas and districts and stuff like that, having a big entire city, I still kind of tend to do the same thing. So basically you import goods on the left side and on the right side of the city you export all your good. By doing this you'll have a flow from left to right side of your city and then you'll also be able to design the internals of your city after this flow and so you can maximize your capacity for this flow and you'll have great traffic in your city, no problems. So tip number two, calculate your needs. Now this is mostly aimed towards the new City Skylines industry stuff, but works with pretty much everything. So what you need to do is calculate the amount of products made and then match it with the amount of processing you do. So for example if you make excess amounts of stage 1 products, then you're losing out on some sweet cash that could have been made. And not making enough stage 1 products, well now you're losing out on efficiency and you'll most likely have to import more goods which will make more traffic coming from different directions just not as good as calculating your needs. So calculating your needs will make you able to optimize your industrial zones and put them into high gear. In some cases you can even double, triple or why not quadruple your income. Tip number 3. Track your unemployment rate. Now this is pretty straightforward and will improve the overall performance of your city. Not only will it maximize income and growth, but it can at times save your city from going into a negative state of income. By having a look at the population tab, we can see how many unemployed people we have in percentage. By actively working on lowering this number, you will be able to make more money by allowing everyone in your city to have a job and to work. Now this is pretty straightforward to solving, you just check the number out, you figure out how many jobs roughly more you need, it's kinda tough because it doesn't really show direct numbers, it depends on the age of your population and all that. So basically what you can do is just try adding some more jobs and you'll see if the percentage goes down. You can also look at the demand bar down in the left corner here and you'll see how much more of what type of zoning you need. So here in the background you can see me adding some insane amount of oil buildings here in the oil industry. This is just to add a bunch of jobs and you can see the unemployment rate just starts falling straight away because we didn't have enough jobs to begin with. So, tip number four, space. Now I don't mean space and spaceships, I mean more like actual ground area. Use more space than you think you need. Density is what drives traffic jams. Whenever designing a city, taking density into consideration is really important. Density sure is nice when it comes to making money, but it's the cause of pretty much all traffic jams. By having too high density with too little capacity is always a formula for disaster. One easy way to overall improve your traffic management is by just having a look at your density. The city here in front of me is a perfect example. 
High density equals more people on a smaller area, which also means more traffic in a smaller area. More traffic equals more cars, and cars take up a lot of space. Not only do you need higher speeds on the roads to get the cars away from the city, but overall your roads need to have more space for cars, because there is going to be more cars on the road at the same time. We often solve this by having multiple routes, or just crazy amount of lanes to increase the surface area of the roads. But the best way to solve this is rather simple. Just decrease your density and allow your people more space to breathe. Now tip number 5. So pretty much tip number 5 is all about traffic flow. And now we already talked about flow going through your city. But of course there will be bottlenecks every here and there. And what you can really do is just look at your flow chart here. This here basically shows where there are a lot of cars. The redder, the more cars are in that area and on that road. And you want the number to go as high as you can, as close to 100% as possible. But I would say anything above 60% is just good, it's great traffic. Pretty much what you need to do is find your red spots and find where they arrive from. So you can't only look at the red spots and be like, oh, I might add more lanes here, because then you'll move the bottleneck further in front of that, or you'll move it back a few steps. You won't really get rid of it. So what you do is you have a look at those red spots, and then you figure out where the traffic is coming from. And then you add a route for that traffic to go to where it wants to go. So for example in my city here, as you can see in the background, we have a lot of red areas. But we start to look at those red areas and where the traffic is coming from. And then we add some new roads and guide them to their destination really easily, even adding some new roads. and actually also removing some roads because you know roads can decrease your traffic flow basically the cars will take the shortest route to their destination and if there is a really small heavily used road that is just really right to their destination they'll jump on it and create a big line so sometimes forcing people onto a bigger highway which might be a longer route, will just increase your traffic flow and make it all better. Overall, this is one of the steps that takes the most time, but just needs to be done. Once you've found your routes, you can clean it all up and make all your routes and roads look nice. You don't really have to make all the roads perfect here in the beginning. You just want to test out how you can make the traffic flow the best. And when you find that perfect flow, well, then it's time to clean it all up and make your city pretty once again. So that has been my top 5 tips and tricks here for city skylines and for city skylines industries. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if this helped you in any way, shape or form. Stay tuned for future videos and I'll see you guys next time. I want to try a new thing. We got another mod that enabled us to have infinite outside connections. Oh. Well, that didn't work very well. And I have a plan here, guys. So we should use 4.5 rows of this, which means we should have like another, what's that, three up here. But I'm actually going to fill this out here because... I want to see if you can... What happens if you have too many of them? Will it still make it somehow? Maybe the roads and all that doesn't make it 100% efficient. Or maybe we can add more efficiency to these here later on. But um, let's give these guys some water. And also you guys might be like, hmm, did he actually forget to use storage once again? And uh, nope, I did not. I have another plan for that. And uh, let me show you exactly what I mean here. I want to have the storage kind of like on the way somehow, but first let me connect up the small roads here. And that is looking all cool, yeah. Um, so what I really wanted to do was add a storage in between here, but as I can see now it doesn't really fit too well. Um, I guess I can move this up here a little bit. I must finish, fini finish it off real quick here first. There we go, get twice of those now. Let's extend these here, this here a little bit. Like that, probably. One more step right, one more. There we go. Grab this guy. 
connect it on to that one delete reconnect and all done gonna re-add some water piping here and we should be already set to go and we can delete this one